Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. Today I am working on this Bally early solid state game, Matahari. Now this is not your typical version of the game. This is a really beautiful minty version that I pulled out of somebody's garage many years ago and it's been sitting up here in, in this cabin that I've got. And uh, I am testing a new technology in this game um, that is really quite cool and you'll be seeing more videos from me on it. It involves uh, a microcontroller that can be plugged into the standard MPU board of these Bally 35 and early Stern solid state games and completely rewrite the rule set. It's pretty darn cool, it's very inexpensive and it's a kind of a grassroots community project started by this guy um, named Dick Hamill up in Maine and uh, basically he was, you know, somebody said you could never get an Arduino to run a uh, a Bally 35, it's not fast enough, and he took up the challenge and he's actually done it. So I am helping him debug some of the stuff and prototype some of the early hardware and software. And uh, this is one of the games that he's working on rewriting the rule set for, Bally Matahari. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a demo of where we're at with this. So first let me show you what the hardware looks like. This is, this is an early prototype board that I manually put together and I'm going to be doing more videos and I've got some videos and pictures of the process of putting this together. Now they are prototyping some etched boards so it'll be a lot easier than having to run all these wires yourself. But I've been fiddling with this since before the boards were available so they're pretty cool. This is an Arduino Nano. It's a microprocessor. It's only about ten dollars or so. And there's a few extra components. This plugs into an external sound card so you can have um, wave files and stuff. And then this is just a little switch that en either enables the Arduino and its code or lets the game run natively. So this is something that you can piggyback onto your existing game without changing the game. You can still boot to the original game and code and play it like it's an original game or you could boot to the revised updated code that is on the Arduino. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's take a look in the back box here. Open this up and let's turn this light on. And here is our basic stock um, Bally 35 early Stern, but you'll see I've got an Alltech MPU in there, an updated MPU, and that's the reason is because obviously, like many of these games, the battery got bad, and uh, and I just replaced it rather than rebuilt it. So it looks normal, except you'll see there's a little daughter board plugged in up at the top with an Arduino on it. This is one of the prototype uh, etched boards that. Um, is going to be more widely available soon and so this is just a simple simple little thing it fits right onto a plug and uh, kind of sits on that gate thing and can take control of the machine so let's let's show you what it does which is different now this is an early early version of the code it's nowhere near it finished but it does show you that this little controller is taking over the game so let's turn the machine on and since this is an early version of the game, uh, there's still some glitches. It doesn't, it doesn't boot up straight into this, but there's a jumper on there. I can unplug it and it will boot up like the normal game. So let's boot the Arduino and show the new code. So I have to hit this uh, reset button on the Arduino. Okay. And now we've, it's booted up. So in this early version of the game, and code, there's not a whole lot going on. There's there's not much of an attract mode you can see. It's just mostly that. And in my game I've got some of the GI disabled and there's some of the GI is disabled in the play field. You'll see there's no there's no lights on the play field right now in attract mode. And that's just it's just not written into the code yet. So let's talk about Ballad Matahari and the, the base game is very simple and straightforward. You shoot the A and the B lanes and it advances this uh, score starts off 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 all the way up to special and extra ball if you keep making that loop. And then the drop targets give you a bonus and uh, the saucer up top is kind of another award that gets higher and, and all that. And that's basically it. It's your, it's your typical early sand, uh, solid state game which is collect bonus, certain shots will, con will continue to become more lucrative and that's it. Blah blah blah, ball drains, collect your bonus. Um, now, what they've done with this is the, they've added actual modes where, in, in addition to the standard gameplay, if you make certain shots in a certain sequence or a certain time, it enables a special area of the play field for higher scoring and special features. So let's take a look at, let's start a game and I'll show you what we're talking about. 
So first off, this is an unusual game. It has chimes instead of a regular sound card. Most of the sound is not fully implemented. Um, right now, you're, you're in a process of just kind of trying to hash out the rule set and make sure everything is working, make sure the control of the hardware is working. So it's an early version of the game. But what you see is, uh, you see how A and B are kind of blinking like that. Um, this game, you can normally play it like you would, but you can qualify a mode. So if you hit the A and the B targets within a certain amount of time, it will qualify a particular mode, and then you start that mode by hitting the saucer up top. So let's, you can see what happens to the lights on the play field. So let's take a quick look. I'm going to hit A, and you'll see here the bonus lights up, and it starts counting down. You see that? Now, not all my lights are lit. That's actually a countdown timer so that you see B is flashing higher. So if you hit B before this thing counts down, you can qualify the mode. Now, let's see, I didn't, now I did it, see? Um, I, had, I hit B, but it, the counter ran out, so I had to restart the counter, but then I went over to A. So now I hit A and B. Now you'll see A and B is flashing. So a mode has been qualified. Now depending upon what mode it is, it will enable a different mode. Now you start the mode by hitting the saucer. So if A and B is alternating, that's orbits mode, where if you make the orbit shot, let's, well, let's just do it. So now you hit that. Now orbit mode is going, so um, you'll see up on the top, there's a five. So that's the number of shots that it's expecting you to get to, I guess, uh, complete the mode fully. So let's, 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 let me do an orbit. There's an A and there's a B. So, let's, so I guess uh, every A and every B... Let's hit, all right, so the mode ended. I guess it's also timed if you don't do it in a certain amount of time. So that mode ended, and um, we're back. So now, I don't, we're qualifying another mode, I think, but this mode, you'll see the, um, the thing is cycling to the left. That means uh, that is left drop target mode. So let's see about if we qualify that, although B is lit, let's hit B, and then A. So that's how you start the next mode, okay? So now A and B is cycling. So when A and B is cycling, oh, now it's right. See, now it's cycling to the right. So the mode is qualified. This is going to be the right drop target mode. So let's start it. All right. So you see it put up the right drop targets. Now there's an eight up there. So that's the number of shots. I guess two banks of the drop targets. Let's hit one. Hit another. Three. Two. And there, we, there it is. My drop targets are a little bit flaky. Um, but that mode has now been qualified. Let's let the ball drain. Racked up quite a bit of bonus, too. So, pretty darn neat. Yeah, again, let's qualify mode. Let's hit the... Uh, you'll see... I think this might be the skill shot. See, it's A, B, and then the arrow. A, B, and the arrow. If you can make that shot... Missed it. Okay. So now we're back to qualified another mode. Let's hit A... Now we got to hit the B in a certain amount of time. You can see it's counting down here. We hit the B. Bam. Now we've qualified a mode. Um, so let's see. Which one is it? I guess it's the left drop, left drop target mode. I wonder if you could change the qual what mode it is by hitting A and B again. Let's see. Yeah, so now it changes the mode. So now you'll see it's going to the right. Let's hit A and B again, and that now the a, a, a and B is, is uh, cycling up. So let's, let's start this mode and see what it is. All right. Looks like it might be the left drop target mode. See with the, so 12 is on there. No, nope. see, so it's not the left one. I uh, wonder what mode it is. It's not the, not the, not the um, pop bumpers. 
and it's not the thing, so I wonder if it's the sling. Hmm, it's not counting down, and uh, I don't see what's qualified. I wonder if this could be a bug in the code, because in that particular case, it looked like we started a mode, but none of the switches that I hit counted down the countdown, because they'll put a little number on the screen. So we're still hashing out the issues with it, but it's pretty darn cool. It's, it's a more compl much more complicated than your typical game, and uh, there'll be more sounds and feedback and stuff like that. This is a, but this is just a, a taste of what's to come, and it's a pretty darn cool. Um, take an old game like this and make the rule set a little bit deeper. And I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's other stuff you can do too. You can interface this with this wave card and you can take your own sounds and put them on an SD card and have this thing play sounds and music and other stuff. So we could theoretically have these games have call outs, explain what's going on, all kinds of neat stuff. So this is uh, the beginning of a new technology that we're just kind of starting to fiddle around with. And this is uh, some of the early implementation. So I hope you like it. Follow us, follow me at Pinball Help, Twitter and Instagram on Facebook and um, uh, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, YouTube slash Pinball Help. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.